Welcome to today's Thanksgiving service. It's a delight that we get to gather in this space and rejoice and celebrate in God's goodness for us uh, this day. Um, Give praise to the Lord, proclaim his name, make his name, make known among the nations what he has done. Sing to him, sing praise to him, tell of all his wondrous acts. Glory in his holy name, let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord in his strength, seek his face always. God greets his people saying grace, mercy, and peace to you. From God the Father, from Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, through the presence and the power of the Holy Spirit. And together we say, Amen. We have a set of three songs we're going to sing back to back to back. Behold our God, let all things now living, and finally, we praise you, O God. <clears throat>
may be seated. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we are immensely grateful to you. We're especially thankful for family, that you place us uh, among people that we love dearly, and we're thankful f that they love us back. And it's amazing that though there is sometimes tension and friction within our families, within our households, that at root, the love that you have um, poured into us gets poured out into those that are close to us as well. We're really thankful for the way that we can uh, encourage and lift each other up and support each other. And we're thankful that, uh, that that's a helpful imagery, I image for our church as well, that here too we're, we're family, that we encourage each other, that we build each other up, that even though we don't always see eye to eye or agree about everything, that at root we still love each other and care deeply um, for the concerns that each other has. We're immensely thankful for the freedom that we have to worship you, to call on your name, to sing your praises. We're thankful that the uh, COVID pandemic is at a different stage. And so right now we're not under lockdown. This looked a lot different two years ago uh, when we had a Thanksgiving service that was well, completely online. And so we're immensely thankful to you that uh, we can gather together like this in, in the same space. We're thankful that uh, medical technology provides well, vaccinations and health care, uh, dental care, um, all kinds of stuff is so readily available here in this part of the world. And we're thankful to you for that. We're thankful for the peace and the safety that we enjoy. When we see pictures of um, people farming the fields in the Ukraine uh, with uh, the war going on uh, there, it uh, gives us immense gratitude that, uh, well, that we can till ground without worrying about uncovering a bomb and that um, we can sit in our houses without being worried about uh, shells coming through the windows. Uh, that peace comes from you and it's a gift and we're thankful for that. We're immensely thankful for the food that is so readily available. And even if we have trouble making ends meet, we're thankful for the food bank and for the um, safety net in this part of the world that uh, there's support. And um, we're really thankful that you place us within a, a broader community where that's so readily available. We're thankful that we can um, spend this time uh, thinking about your blessings, your care, your love for us and for your world. And we pray that uh, this service glorifies your name and that the things that, uh, that we haven't mentioned aloud um, resonate in our mind and in our hearts and that we take the time today to, not to express our gratitude to you for all the blessings you've lavished on us. Not least, of course, life and hope and a future because of the coming, the death, the resurrection and the ascension of our Savior Jesus Christ. To him be glory and praise in all that we do today and throughout the week. Amen.
This responsive reading has sections for the pastor, sections for everybody, sections for men and boys, sections for ladies and girls. And so read the captions so that, well, even if you make a mistake, it's no big deal. God, today we are thankful most of all for you. Without you, we cannot even breathe. You provide rhythm to our hearts and to our lives. You are our protector, our guide, our strength, our creator, and our redeemer. We are thankful for your presence here. We give thanks to you, O God. We give thanks for your name is near. God, you created this wonderful ball known as planet Earth. You created the Milky Way galaxy. You created the entire universe that surrounds it. You are the provider and the sustainer of life for all times and in all continuums. I will praise you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. All the earth bows down to you. They sing praise to you. They sing praise to your name. We're thankful for our nation, for Canada. We're thankful for our liberties, for our freedoms, and especially the ability to worship you as guided by your word without being hindered by government or other adversaries. May the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you rule the peoples justly. We're thankful for the leadership of our country. Continue to guide our leaders, O oh God, and keep us safe. We're thankful for the province of Ontario, for the wonderful changing of the seasons, for the bountiful harvests, for plentiful jobs. We're thankful for community services, for community shelters, food banks, nursing homes, police officers, paramedics, firefighters, for churches, schools, hospitals. We're thankful for OHIP and for libraries. You are awesome, O God, in your sanctuary. The God of Israel gives power and strength to his people. We're thankful for the local church, for Crosspoint Community Church, for Classes Ontario Southwest, for our denomination. Keep us true, keep us steadfast in your word. We are thankful for all who serve in our church, for our pastor, for Kim, our administrator, for our deacons, our elders, and for all the other leaders and volunteers, for those who clean and maintain the property, for those who provide music in our worship services, for those who pray, for those who need our prayers, and for all who attend worship services in this church. We're thankful for each other. We're really thankful for our families. We're thankful for our homes. Oh Lord, my God, I will give you thanks forever. We're thankful for the many blessings that you provide for us, for food and shelter, for clothing, for employment, for health, for education. I will lie down and sleep in peace. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me well in safety. I will give thanks to the Lord because of his righteousness and will sing praise to the name of the Lord Most High. Great are you, Lord. Let's stand and sing together. Great are you, Lord.
the uh, deacons often highlight things for us to uh, consider as we're bringing donations. And this uh, day is no different. Uh, there's a basket in the foyer, or you can give online, and the deacons highlight uh, the Canadian Food Grains Bank. And we recognize that it's not just with uh, money that we support this, and which is in itself kind of neat when the, tr- the uh, government matches are giving four to one. But uh, there's a growing project that we have, that we have uh, a photo here of, the uh, soybeans this year. And uh, we're really grateful for those in our congregation and in uh, Mount Elgin United Church that have uh, donated time and equipment to prepare the ground, to plant the seed, provided the seed, have, uh, have put other inputs into it, and uh, it uh, looks like it's just about ready to harvest, and we're grateful that people will volunteer time and equipment to, uh, to take this crop off the field as well, so that uh, people can receive uh, food uh, in places where there's drought or other types of famine. And so thank you, congregation, for your generosity in this growing project, and thank you for your generosity the rest of the time as well. It's really neat that we um, have a generous congregation, that the support for different ministries are so high in well, a relatively small congregation, and that we're able to do the ministry that uh, we can do because of the generosity, the donations, the volunteering that, uh, that you invest into Crosspoint, into the kingdom of God. So thank you very much for all of that. We're going to um, read from the Bible And uh, to prepare ourselves to hear God's word, please join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, um, we've listed a whole whack of things that we're grateful for. And and some people have mentioned the Bible and the the time, the space, the education to, uh, to meditate on your word, to hear what you're saying to us uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. And we pray that you continue to move in us, to move among us, that we can hear what you want us to hear from your word, and that as we meditate on it, that it becomes more clear what our response ought to be. And we pray that our whole lives can be transformed by Jesus' death and resurrection, and by your word and spirit, making us more and more people after your own heart. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Philippians chapter 4. Again, this is one of the passages that made it in uh, Cross Point's top 20 that we collected last fall, and I'm uh, trying to catch up on, on some of these, uh, making a message on it. It seemed that this was going to be fitting for Thanksgiving. And in chapter 4 of the book of Philipp- Philippians, the letter to the church in Philippi, starting at verse 4, it says, Rejoice in the Lord always. I'll say it again. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guide your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Finally, brothers and sisters, this is close to the end of the letter, and so he uh, says, finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you've heard or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I want to begin by stating the obvious, it's Thanksgiving Day. And so it's a day for counting the blessings, for listing, mentioning, praying about the things that we have received from God. It's time to pause and marvel that this year again, whether it was flowers or whether it was uh, another crop, when we put a seed into the ground in ways that science can just describe but not fully explain, it germinated and it came out of the ground 
And it grew and matured, the majority of the times grew and matured and produced a crop that we then can harvest and can use that for food or for other things. It just takes, takes your breath away to consider that once again that miracle happened and stuff grew. The crops this year around here anyhow, most of it wasn't flattened by wind or by hail. They didn't dry up because there was no rain. It was a dry spell for a while, but eventually rain came. And most of the fields around here didn't get flooded this season. I know avian flu was a concern for some of us, but I didn't hear of an outbreak close by. Was there anything too close, Pete? Nothing that close. Hogs and sheep and chickens and goats and cattle were finished and shipped. Dairy farms were able to produce milk and to ship that out as well. There were challenges. There's always challenges when you're in agriculture. But generally, for the most of us, it's been a very productive year. And so we're here thankful to God for His generosity, for His care, for the way that He made things grow and made a lot of our businesses flourish. And it's not because somehow the people around here are just better farmers than anywhere else. No, I, it's something that God blessed what we did so that this season has been productive. And so we're here, we're gathered, and perhaps there's family gatherings that, that we're going to spend time at over this weekend or next weekend where we express our gratitude, where we brag to each other about how God has taken care of us once again this year, and we give Him thanks. Anybody know what the big theological term is for the describing when God provides, when the stuff that we need is produced and available and we get to use it and enjoy it. What's the theological term for that? Yeah? Providence, yeah. Providence. You know that? That's describing God taking care because of his great love, God taking care of his people and providing what we need when we need it. In the Heidelberg Catechism, when we talk about God being our Heavenly Father, then we also talk about providence. And, and you'll get there in the study, body and soul, that we're embarking on as a congregation. I think that's going to be week two that we pick up on this. But if we put this on the screen... And I read the question, do you mind with, uh, resp responding aloud with answer 28? If you're able to say it. Dearly loved people of God, how does the knowledge of God's creation and providence help us? For all creatures are so completely in God's hand that without his will, they can neither move nor be moved. The creation isn't just a watch that God made and wound up and then set and let it run. God continues to be intimately involved in every aspect of his world. And that's a comforting thought, isn't it? That's the thought that's the basis, the foundation for the whole letter that Paul and Timothy wrote to the church in Philippi. I mean, briefly, I considered tossing the whole sermon and just reading the book, the, the letter to the church in Philippi from chapter 1 of verse 1, chapter 1, verse 1 to, to the end of chapter 4. Especially when my computer crashed on Friday morning, it became even more tempting to do that. But I think actually, no, we're, we're not going to do that after all. We're going to focus on these verses that we read. And the verses that we read are the beginning of the conclusion of this letter from Paul and Timothy to the church in Philippi. And overall, it sounds like a bright and cheery letter. I've heard people describe it as the, the most joyful letter of any that Paul wrote. And it might be the effect of working with Timothy but in its brightness and cheeriness, some people might think that it's out of touch with the challenges and realities of, of the world. It, it might sound naive, just 
rejoice in the Lord. Is that simplistic? Rejoice in the Lord. I'll, I'll say it again, just, just rejoice. Does that sort of not do justice to all the stuff that we have to deal with day in, day out? But it's not that Paul and Timothy are being flippant. As you read the rest of your letter, uh, of this letter, and that's your homework for today, go home, read the whole letter from cover to cover. As you read the letter, you'll see that this invitation, that this command to rejoice in the Lord is central to the way that Paul and Timothy deal with the realities of life. It's central to the way that they deal with the anxieties and the stress of life in a sin-stained world, life in a broken and hurting world. Rejoicing in the Lord is central to dealing with all those anxieties, put it into perspective. Because when you read this whole letter, you learn that Paul is working on this letter with Timothy because he has manacles on both wrists. He's dictating this letter because when that chain is attached to the wall, it's really hard to pick up a quill and write it down. Paul is in prison. He's under arrest. He's awaiting trial. And Paul doesn't know if this trial is going to lead to his execution, which he said, well, then I'll be with God, which would be okay. Or that he's going to eventually get released and have further work to do, which Paul says also would be okay. But there's a silver lining that Paul sees in being arrested and being chained in one spot. Because he said, every time the guard change happens, it's a brand new audience. I can tell the gospel of Jesus Christ to two more new guards once again. I mean, talk about silver lining, right? In the prisons of the Roman Empire, you don't get three hot meals in a cot. Your family and your friends need to provide you with everything that you need in prison. Otherwise, you'll starve there. The government's not going to do that. And so this letter from Paul and Timothy is an extended thank you note that they're sending back to the church in Philippi. Because the Christians in Philippi have stepped up once again. When, church, when Paul was just south of Philippi, planting the church in Thessalonica, he said they sent me to, uh, help time and again. The care packages just kept on coming while he was working in Thessalonica. And now that he's in prison in Rome, they did it again. They sent Epaphroditus with his care package from Philippi across the ocean to Rome so that Paul would have the stuff that he needs. And he's immensely grateful. And so this is part of the thank you letter that he sends to them. Meanwhile, though, back in Philippi, there's this heated debate that's going on among the Christians in the city of Philippi. The question about whether Christians who are Gentiles need to be circumcised in order to become Christians, well, it flared up all over again. I know, you thought they dealt with it in Acts chapter 15 with the council in Jerusalem after Paul's first um, missionary journey, before the Christians even became Christians in Philippi. But no, it hasn't died down yet. And so there's Christian Judaizers who have come and troubled the people in Thessalonica and said, no, no, all you guys got to get circumcised before you can become Christians. And you have to obey the whole law in order to be right with God. And Paul's like, no, we did this already. But what's the solution in in that equation? Well, Paul tells the church in Philippi, don't take any pride. Don't celebrate whether you've been circumcised or haven't been circumcised. That's not what it's about. No. Rejoice in the Lord is Paul's solution. And we could say the same thing for our successes or failures in farming or business this year. Don't take pride in your farming or your skill, your work ethic. Or the fact that it went really well this year. But the other side is also true. Don't hang your head in dejection when it doesn't go well. No. Rejoice in the Lord. This isn't flippant advice. Paul isn't just singing, don't worry, be happy. That's not where he's going with this. This call to rejoice in the Lord is deeply rooted in his understanding of God's providence. His care, God's deep, deep abiding love for his people, for his creation. 
And why can you rejoice in the Lord regardless of what else is happening? Because it's Jesus who has rescued us by making us holy, by making us righteous in the sight of God Most High. When we measure our own success at loving God and loving our neighbor, well, even on our best days, I'm not at 100%. You're probably not at 100%. Our own efforts, no matter how hard we try, can't make us holy, can't make us righteous. As a result, we face God's judgment and the punishment for disobeying God's instructions. The punishment for not living up to the goodness that God has for us, for not being holy the way that God is holy, the the punishment for that is only and always death. And God's not going to turn a blind eye on the evil things that people do. Not for our enemies, not for us. Judgment is coming against all wrongdoing. But, but, out of his deep, deep love for his creation, out of his deep, deep love for all humankind, Jesus Christ, God himself, came into his own creation. He came into the world, and as a 100% righteous human being, he can stand in our place and take the punishment we deserve. As 100% God, he can bear the weight of God's anger at sin. It's not going to destroy him. Instead of dying and staying dead, he takes the punishment, he endures the horrors of hell, and then after he dies, he rises to, to life once again. Three days later, Jesus emerges from the tomb. That's what we rejoice in. Jesus' victory is why we gather each week on Sunday, where we're gathered here on a Thanksgiving Monday to rejoice in Jesus' success at resisting temptation, living a holy life, dying and rising again for our sake. We rejoice in Jesus' love for God, his love for his neighbor. We celebrate his loving sacrifice that covers over all our guilt, covers all over all of our shortcomings, so that when God looks at those who have faith in Jesus Christ... When God looks at those who are rejoicing in the Lord instead of what they themselves have done, he sees Jesus' victory instead of our sin. And so rejoicing in the Lord, the way that Paul and Timothy say in this letter, isn't about somehow glossing over the troubles of the world. No, we rejoice in the Lord because he has given us the victory in Jesus Christ. Jesus has given us freedom. It's a celebration because Jesus brings us so close to our Heavenly Father that we can actually see his care, his providential care and love for us. And then, doesn't it make sense that instead of rejoicing in our accomplishments as if somehow we had done something amazing that we rejoice in the Lord because Jesus has done something amazing for us and for all creation we rejoice in the Lord because of his victory over sin and death we also rejoice in the Lord because of all of our efforts in agriculture all our efforts in business all our efforts in our families and our households nothing would come unless it was God who brought sunshine God who brought rain God who brought life God who designed things so that they work in a certain way God who made it so that certain chemicals react within our bodies to make us healthier and stronger and less depressed All of these things are gifts from God. And so we rejoice in the Lord. Because if God didn't provide seasons, if God didn't design seeds so that they did sprout and produce a crop, we wouldn't have anything at all. We rejoice in the Lord not because we have made something new, because we haven't made anything new. We're simply in farming and anything else, we're harvesting the potential that God created within his creation to feed people, to make energy, to make medicine, and to do all the things, clothing, whatever else that we're working on. All that potential comes from God in his creation and in his sustaining his creation. And so we rejoice in the Lord because he designed and refined and sustains the world season after season, year after year. It's God who makes things happen and feeds his people and provides us with all things that we need. And so this is not a simplistic statement about denying mental illness to say, don't be anxious about anything. Of course, 
If you're struggling with mental illness or anxiety or depression, use the counseling that's available, use the medicine that's available. Because God is the one who provided the wisdom and the insights that there's counselors and doctors and medications. God's the one who's provided all these things. But whether it's a medical issue that we're facing, or whether it's a season that we have sleepless nights because we're tied up in knots about stuff, the invitation here in God's Word is to put your fears and worries into a proper context. You're invited to rejoice in the Lord, to remember that He's the one that cares for you and continues to work in His creation. Jesus has rescued you from sin and from death. He's adopted you as His dearly loved child. And He has and will continue to provide everything that you need for life and holiness in His kingdom. He's given you a place in His family. And so by faith in Jesus Christ, you've become part of the body of Christ. And Jesus loves and cares for his body more lovingly than you care for your own body. And so you can simply rejoice in the Lord. He's got this. The Creator lovingly cradles you in the palm of his hand. And because you're in the palm of his hand, that's a safe place to be. And so instead of, instead of lying awake anxiously at night, instead of brooding over things at 3 a.m. like well, sometimes we end up doing, instead of gnawing on the same worries as we drive and commute to work or get driven to school, you're invited to put everything into the proper context, to rejoice in the Lord and to replace unhealthy thoughts with all the good stuff that God has provided. It's one of the things that says that Paul and Timothy write in the closing of this letter. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, those are the things that you should think about. And this has an effect on the way that we spend our free time and what we do. This isn't just a, something to, to count blessings and, and count good things at 3 a.m. when we can't sleep because we're worried. This also has an effect on, well, what kind of books you read, what kind of movies you watch. Are there excellent and praiseworthy things in our entertainment that help us see the goodness, the providence of God and His handiwork and His creation? What are we filling our minds with? Are they true? And noble and right and pure? Lovely? Are they admirable? Are we spending time thinking about stuff that's excellent and praiseworthy? I'll just let that hang there for a second. We're going to stand and sing in response. Now thank we all our God.
go out into this day, into this week, into this celebration of thankfulness with God's blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you shalom. And all God's people say, Amen. Amen. For our closing song, uh, we're going to be doing a praise and thanksgiving. If we can get um, sort of a third of the people here to kind of shuffle over just a little bit so that you'll be able to do the uh, first part of the round. Middle people will do the second part, and the last people will do the last part. It's going to go actually in reverse to that, actually. Um, Isaiah will lead the farthest over group here in the first part. I will do the middle part, and Marilyn will do the last part. We're going to sing the first verse together, all together. And then Isaiah will start you guys off. I will join the middle part in, and then Marilyn will join in the last part, and we'll carry through the whole song. It'll hopefully go really well. Peace.